about. I think I, mean, I will start by uh, looking at the issue of whether you know the title says multilateralism at the crossroads. Uh, I'm not sure that we are at crossroads in the sense that crossroads assumes that we have some choice. I mean, if you take left, you can take this go to safety, another road goes to danger. I mean, we are where we are, not because we made wrong choices, but because of the nature of uh, power, as, as, as uh, Dr. Rajman mentioned. There is a little bit of choice involved. I mean, I'm not saying there's no choice involved at all, but, uh, but the choices that we have are fairly limited, and the situation that we are in is primarily because of the fundamentally sort of altered uh, power balance that we have today. One of the reasons, when we talk about multilateralism during the, uh, you know, the, in the let's say, for even for the post-1945 period, we are talking about multilateralism that was a very limited multilateralism that, in, that only involved one part of the world. I mean, it obviously completely left out, except in some areas, completely left out the, the communist part. I mean, it was primarily a Western European, uh, Western-oriented uh, multilateralism. I mean, there is UN, of course, and you know, there are some areas of uh, arms control and disarm and security issues that, that included, that is broader. But the, but the liberal international order that we keep talking about was primarily a Western uh, American um, sort of order. So that that particular uh, order uh, has become, of course, uh, global in the post uh, after the end of the Cold War because of the fact that the Soviet Union collapsed in Russia, its successful state, and all the uh, Central and Eastern European states joined that. But the point is that 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 set system was was created primarily by the United States, uh, and it was created. It was, it was the U.S. was was able to create it primarily because of the enormous uh, uh, disparity in power between everybody else and, uh, and the United States. And we kept talking about the fact that the Cold War was bipolar. But if you look at the, if you look at the actual power uh, in terms of, let's say, GDP or, uh, or the economy, economic power between the United States and the Soviet Union, they were not, not comparable at all. I mean, the, 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 the gap between the United States and the Soviet Union was huge. Uh, in military power, in terms of nuclear weapons, yes, they had, they had some, they, they were comparable. But it was that huge gap in the in the in the economic capacity of the United States that allowed the United States to create a, a multilateral order. And yes, of course, uh, on on other some security issues, there were there was there was it's slightly different. But in terms of the in terms of the international order that was created, it was primarily an American international order. But that is what has changed. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the balance of power between the United States and China today, it's far narrower than it was ever between the United States and the Soviet Union. And that's something that we keep forgetting because of the fact that uh, China doesn't have as many nuclear weapons, or China doesn't have a global political role, or China doesn't have the military capacity to extend its, to sort of expand its power or to project its power across the world. We assume that China is far weaker than the Soviet Union was. But today, if, if, if you look at it in, the, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the economic capacity, uh, it is not a multipolar world; it's a, it's a bipolar world. And I think we need to sort of understand the fact that it's a bipolar world. Uh, and in a bipolar world, that kind of multilateralism becomes a lot more difficult, especially considering the fact that the bipolar period, the, the, the bipolarity, the power distribution bipolarity in the Cold War period was different, was much more skewed towards the United States uh, than it is today, where, where China is far more of an equal power um, uh, compared to the Soviet Union. The other area, you know, the other sort of, uh, um, uh, the limited areas where uh, in the security realm, especially, especially where you did have uh, some uh, multilateral successes, uh, primarily in terms of the non-proliferation, the nuclear non-proliferation treaty and associated regimes, that, uh, regimes associated with the non-proliferation treaty, the NSG that we keep hearing about uh, and, and, and a few others. That was possible partly because both the United States and the Soviet Union saw the spread of nuclear weapons as a threat to their uh, dominance, to both of their dominance. And in that sense, you know, the, the, the one area where they cooperated was in ensuring that uh, that nuclear weapons did not spread. In fact, they were hardest, both the United States and the Soviet Union were extremely hard on their own allies. Uh, the United States was the one that prevented most of its allies from going nuclear weapons. South Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan started a nuclear weapons program that was basically destroyed by the United States. South Koreans were shut down by the United States, Australia, Canada, all of these were countries that wanted nuclear weapons that could not go nuclear, nuclear because of the fact that the United States opposed it. Uh, the Soviet Union similarly made sure that none of its uh, allies got nuclear weapons, even though most of them had the technological capacity to do that. So in a sense, that on that one issue, they both agreed. And that was the one area where there was success. And what you've had since the end of the Cold War, except in the 1990s when the United States could sort of 
because of its enormous uh, capacity, it could uh, it could uh, force uh, the CTBT, it could ensure that the NPT was removed uh, forever, and so on and so forth. Uh, but now what we have is a, is a, is a, is a system where uh, is, a, is an order in which I don't think either Russia or China sees uh, the spread of nuclear weapons as necessarily harmful to their interests. I mean, the Chinese sort of um, cover that it provides to North Korea or to or to Iran. So in a sense, I think the two things I suppose that was that was that allowed for success. One was American dominance. The second one was a consensus between the two great powers. Both of them are missing today, and therefore I would be, I would suggest that multipolar uh, multilateralism is a lot more important than than we assume.